Mark writes, Can you explain cavitation bubbles that erode piston liners in a wet-lined diesel engine? Well, that's rather specific. I briefly covered cavitation in an earlier video on sonoluminescence, as cavitation bubbles are how we turn sound into light. You should uh, check it out if you haven't already. But I imagine you want me to expand on this part, which can cause some nasty damage to machinery. You see, when we have oscillating or rotating machinery in contact with a fluid, whether it's a pump or piston or propeller or turbine, we have to worry about cavitation. That is, we have to worry about the machinery violently tearing apart the fluid and creating low pressure air bubbles. In my sonoluminescence video, I detail what can happen in open space under the right conditions. But what if one of these bubbles attaches itself to a surface? Bubbles can totally do that. Now instead of high pressure pushing equally on all sides of the bubble, there's a much greater force on the fluid side than the surface side. This causes the bubble to implode from the fluid side, sending a jet of liquid rushing towards the machinery at pressures of over 10,000 psi and temperatures of over 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That would chip away just about anything. And in a diesel engine, the problem tends to be in the cylinder walls, which are on the small side. High compression from the piston causes the cylinder to vibrate and generate cavitation bubbles in the cooling fluid surrounding the cylinder. If these bubbles wear away at the cylinder wall, coolant can get into the cylinder and mix with the combustion gases, which isn't very good for the engine. Now, I've never mixed antifreeze and diesel fuel before, but I'm assuming it's not gonna power a truck very well. The really cool thing is how they get around this problem. Instead of eliminating vibrations, the manufacturers add chemicals to the cooling fluid. Molecules attach themselves to the cylinder walls, creating a protective layer. And when cavitation bubbles blast them away, more molecules come in and fill the gaps. So we have a protective film that replenishes itself and cavitation's a little bit less of an issue. The trick here is getting the right molecules to bond to the cylinder wall, which will be different depending on the actual engine itself. Size, shape, and uh, materials are all very important, and the wrong additives may not work at all. Engineers have figured all this stuff out, but if I had to give some advice on maintenance, stick to the manufacturer's recommendations on coolants, additives, and filters, or else the engine might stop working altogether. Well, Mark, Dad, I hope that helps and your students can get something out of my answer. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Mailbag. If you like what I do here, you can go to youtube.com slash thepointstudios and subscribe. And if you have any other questions you'd like me to answer on Mailbag, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or in the comments below. I'll do the research for you.